Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of why you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can can and a can can, a can can, a can can, and a wheel. Now we're off to. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to the channel. Hopefully, hopefully you all are having a great Saturday afternoon, uh, or Saturday morning, or Saturday night. Wherever you are watching, thank you for coming to the channel. Please don't hesitate. Go on and subscribe, share, and like my videos. If you do nothing else, just like my video and subscribe to the channel, okay? But we have an interesting topic that we're going to be talking about today in some areas it was breaking news but you know you know of course i basically uh got it when it was late but i still wanted to cover it because <laughs> if it ain't our president joe biden falling off bicycles and um prince well not prince no more uh king charles over there telling his servants to get things straight and fussing at him about uh, a desk being a little bit too cluttered. That he probably cluttered himself. But he didn't find the time or need that he felt he needed to do anything about it. So he's over there fussing with his cabinet. And then, now we have Putin coming over here and talking about starting a global war. Whoo, child. We just got it. Every day is always something. If we ain't got... If we're not worried about the flu, we're worried about COVID. If we're not worried about the monkeypox, we're worried about war. <laughs> we just can't catch a break. Or no, I shouldn't say that. I said we uh, we should be worried about these uh, tsunamis and these hurricanes tearing up uh, our Florida coastal lands and some. Uh, you know, it's down here in the south, uh, so it's pretty much had Georgia in the winds of it, but we bypassed it, That thank God. Uh, and South Carolina got hit pretty hard, and Myrtle Beach in South Carolina got pretty uh, beat up as well. Uh, but we have to always keep those uh, neighboring stakes in prayer, and hopefully they get the aid that they need from our government. But as you can see, uh, yeah. He wants to go to war with everybody. Not him. He's the one that follows off the bicycle. I'm talking about the one on the left. Okay? But anyway, we get on into the story. We won't tarry too long. Uh, Joshua Berlinger had put out this uh, article along with Ann Tranova and Tim Lister. They are both correspondents, I guess, over there at CNN. Okay? But it says, Putin announced annexation of Ukraine's regions in defiance of international law. Okay? <laughs> and we're going to be um, getting, diving into this to see how much we understand of it. And some of it probably would just go over our heads. But to me, it just seems like two men can't get along, so they want to play with their war toys. Not thinking of the devastation it will have for our country. Okay? And the neighboring countries as well. I don't understand why men can't just talk things out. Or be petty like women. You know, we don't get in touch with you for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Then we come back to the table and see just what can we talk about without trying to say we finna go to war. Now, it's some, it's some big act. As words up in this uh, commentary, so annexation means the action of uh, taking over a territory. Okay, simply put, a form act whereby a state proclaims its sovereignty over territory here, though, outside its dominion. Okay, and and sovereignty is just like another word of authority. Uh, they reigning over these particular countries or people or however you would want to view it it's like supreme power like parliament has over there and congress have over here 
okay so just as long as we got those little two words out the way because i you know i don't like when people be you know saying these big ass words and at the time they probably don't even know what they mean but i try to uh if i don't know what they mean or whatever uh i didn't know what an annexation meant but i knew what servanty was uh because it's so much in the bible with servanty you know the lord uh taking his people and you know guiding them and, and instructing them he has total power and dominion over the earth so i knew about that from church going okay but the annexation i didn't know and i had to look it up so i'm just telling y'all about that okay but we're gonna get on into this uh it seems like a power of man struggling we got going on which is you know bullshit because i always said why do men always want to build mass things of destruction and then they have these bonkers that they go to underground or un under the ground, like a whole city down there. You know what I'm saying? But, of course, we don't know nothing about it. But we know from uh, whistleblowers and uh, things of that nature, come out and tell the public, you know, about what's really going on. But, you know, those are for the big people in charge. They don't care about humanity. Uh, they just worry about their cabinet, they people. Or really, just, you know, they worry about the one that's on top. And maybe the cabinet, meaning, like, say, when Queen was running around there, having all authority and stuff like that over uh, Europe, they would have a bunker for her and her family. See what I'm saying? And a uh, few spaces for the top cabinet people over there in her parliament. Same over here. The president and his family would be definitely secured. And whoever he deemed necessary to be in there with him in that private bunker. And uh, some of his top cabinet people, probably some people from Congress, or probably the whole damn party. Who knows? But people like you and I, we'll be out there, you know, blowing up and, and, and you know, getting all this radiation, dying, and, and just on the surface of the earth, just perishing away. Pretty, that's what it pretty is, pretty much what it is. But um, I always thought, you know, since men can't get along, they need to just sit, the, the president of each country or whatever that we have a problem with. We just need to go in the boxing ring. Just put a big boxing ring out there and let them fight it out. Okay, and whoever wins uh, the fight, that's whoever wins whatever they were fussing about from the beginning. We don't need to have all our men and women going to the service. You know, not voluntarily. You know, they're ordered to come and, you know, get their lives taken away for something we could care less about. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why are we going over here and tearing up a country? Uh, just because we can, I, I, you know, willy-nilly. And then we have to pay for it. And then we have our countries like, you know, uh, Russia or whatever. They come on over here and they tell shit. We got to pay for that too. So it just don't seem like taxpayers get a break. And because it was up to me, I would be saying, sit your ass down. No, we ain't tearing up nothing and we ain't repairing nothing, Okay. No, we're going to handle this another way, diplomatic. We're going to be talking about stuff, okay? Now, I can see tit for tat. You come throw a bomb over here or whatever. We're going to throw a bomb over there somewhere, okay? Now, I can see that, okay? Because it's just like tit for tat. But when you sit there and just say, well, if y'all don't come to this agreement, then we're going to send our men in and we're going to send our troops in um, from our army base and we're going to recruit some more people involuntarily. Uh, it's going to be mandated that they come and we're going to go to war. We're going to use everything on our power. We're going to use guns. We're going to use uh, our snipers. We're going to use, uh, you know, nuclear war. We're just going to do it all. I'm like, no. If we start making rules and having them being passed that you're going to have to go in there first. And your family of men and women that can serve, they go in there first. Because we got the vice president to back up. You know, her family and stuff, in case you, you mess up, we need to send the vice president in. Yeah, okay. And then uh, we have a designated survivor type of situation going on with the, with the uh, what do you call it? Because uh, I watched a movie on Netflix called Designated Survivor. Y'all need to look at that. That tells a lot about the presidency and how things really go on in his cabin and what he's faced with. But it's, if it's something happened to the president, something happened to the vice president, they have to already have a designated survivor for somebody to step in and finish that turn. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't think I learned that in school, but I damn sure I learned it on Facebook. Not Facebook, Netflix, I'm sorry. But you can see, you know, he already in trouble with stuff. He incited a, 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 a well, a takeover, a coup, and he's still running around here free.
and had the people that got prosecuted, they pretty much run around here free too, or got a little slap on the hands, some you know, a little fine here and there, or maybe they got to serve six months to, a, you know, twelve, or you know, a year's time for the mess they did out there, on on the cap. Was it the Capitol? Yeah, it was the Capitol. They just stormed on and taking pictures and all this kind of foolishness. But you know, Putin, he want to go to war. He ain't talking about just any old war. He talking about using nuclear weapons. Okay, and I'm like, what? Well, we going here did you not see human nature and it could have been something orchestrated by man you know starting a, a hurricane or tsunami which they can do it you know what i'm saying uh for the conspiracy theory people out there uh yeah so if it was man-made or god sitting out here it was just woo wee you know what i'm saying south carolina florida just tearing up people's lives and homes we already dealing with natural disasters we got to put it that way why would we want to start a war of global mass murder? Why would we want to do that? We friendly over here in the States. We ain't got time because Joe out there riding his bicycle, trying to get his exercise on, and then he fall off of it when he's sitting still. What'd they tell you? We ain't ready. We are not ready. I don't know what Putin doing over there. I'm pretty sure he's um, having some things as far as his health that needs to be uh, looked at as well, too. But I just hate when men can't get it together. They can't come to any common ground. They be like, well, we got to go to war. No, okay, we ain't no we. You go to war. You and whoever you fighting with, y'all get in the ring and go to war. Or we going to suit you up and all your army brigade and stuff and send you over there. See how you fail. Okay. But to put innocent men and women out there for a cause that you don't brainwash them in that they should believe in that they should go and fight the fight and you don't even know what that fight was all about and could it have really be solved through negotiation talk negotiations well we don't know okay but that's how i felt about the situation i haven't really read the article i just skimmed it a little bit but we're going to go on and let you all hear the article as I read it to you all, I narrate through it. And then you get on those comments down below. And you tell me, what, what's going on? Why we have become such an age? Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing new under the sun. We still are making out there uh, mass destruct destructive weapons to use against other or really mankind. Just because we don't believe in something or we want to take something from somebody. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, we go on. Uh, and the article reads, uh, the title, Putin announces annex, wait a minute, annexation of Ukrainian regions in defiance of international law. As CNN reported, President Putin announced Russia was seized of nearly a fifth of Ukraine on Friday, declaring the millions of people living there would be Russian citizens forever. You see what I'm saying? He ain't giving them a, any thought. He ain't giving them any voting whether we want to do this or not. No, he running in there like who? We could say Hitler. Okay, he trying to do some stuff like that. Like, you don't have a say in this, that, and the third. We just going to come over and run you over with how we feel, our laws. We're going to enforce them on you, and you're going to become a part of the Russian way of living. Okay, but anyway. Under the annexation process, which is illegal under international law, Moscow will recognized four Ukrainian regions as Russia territory. Uh, Luk Lukeski and Donetsk, home to two Russian-backed breakaway republics where fighting has been ongoing since 2014, as well as Kherson and Zafor, two areas in southern Ukraine that have been occupied by Russian forces since shortly after the invasion began. Putin announced uh, his Putin announcement made a formal speech at the Kremlin Upland St. George Hall on Friday. Follow so-called referendums in the regions that were universally dismissed as shams by Ukraine and Western nations. Putin, however, attempted to claim that the referendums reflected the will of millions of people, despite reports from the ground suggesting that voting took place essentially, and in some cases, literally, at gunpoint. Now, if that ain't a hostile takeover, <coughs> as, as clear as one I can see, 
Woo! Without even seeing it being done. It sounds like a hostile takeover. But anyway, Western leaders have slammed the polls saying that they fail to meet internationally recognized standards of free and fair elections. The annexation announcement was met with a similar outcry. Members of the G7, meaning Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, and the United States, and the European Union have vowed to never recognize Russian sovereignty over the regions and to impose sanctions on Russia. U.S. Secretary of State Anton Blinkley and uh, said Washington would place visa restrictions on 910 individuals in Russia and Belarus. While the Biden administration officials said the White House would impose swift and severe costs on Russia. The British government said it would imp implement services, sanctions, and an import ban that target Russian economy vulnerabilities. Ukraine President uh, Zelensky called the move a farce. In a pre-recorded video statement released shortly after Putin's speech and vowed that the entire territory of our country will be liberated. Zelensky also said his country will apply for NATO membership under an accelerated procedure, but it's unclear how long such a process would take. New NATO members must meet a series of criteria for membership and be unanimously approved by current ally allies or alliance members. We see who threatens us, uh, Zelensky said. It is in Ukraine that the fate of democracy or democracy in the confrontation uh, confrontation with Trent Training is being decided. Tyranny is being decided. Despite the world spread condemnation, Russia appears committed to forge ahead with its plans to fly its flag over some 100,000 square kilometers, which is 38,600 square miles, of Ukrainian territory, the largest forcible annexation of land in Europe since 1945. Okay. In his speech, Putin framed the annexation as an attempt to fix what he sees as a great historical mistake. Russia demise following the collapse of the Soviet Union and continued Western efforts to keep the country weak. He repeated his unfolded allegations that genocide was being committed against Russian speakers, one of the false pretenses Russia used to invade Ukraine in February. The address on the whole was a commitment by the Russian leader to continue pursuing his major foreign policy aims or aim, restoring Russia as a major global power charge with protecting the Russian-speaking world for, from the continued threat posed by Western forces. We remember the horrible and hunger in 1990s. But Russia has survived and become stronger, and it has its place in the world, Putin said. But the West is still trying to make us weaker, to split us into parts. A new phase of conflict. The annexation could, lie, could lay the groundwork for a dangerous new phase in Russia's assault on Ukraine. Ukrainian forces have, in recent weeks, successfully expelled Russian forces from parts of Dansky. Uh, thanks in part of the advanced weaponry sent by the U.S. and other allies. KV now controls about 40% of Donsky, though many towns and cities bear scars of war that would take years to heal. Okay, now that Russia formally recognizes Donsky as its own territory, the Kremlin is likely to push forward to recapture it using some of the 300,000 Russian citizens who would be com conscripted as part of the partial mobilization Putin announced last week. It will have to be liberated, said Dmitry Peskovo, Putin's sports spokesman, shortly before the speech. Putin said Friday that while he was willing to negotiate with Ukraine, the sovereignty of those four regions would not be on the table. See, brother man ain't want to give up nothing, okay? He's sitting up there playing chess while we playing checkers, okay? <laughs> I tell you, these men, these men and their temperament. And they say women got all of the temperament and we so weak as, as individuals and we too um, flighty with our thoughts. But we got him and Biden and Trump and anybody else you want to throw in the pandem we got going on here. The paradox box has been open and we ain't ever going to be able to put it back. We ain't going to be able to put it back. Because see these people that are, that are in head, that are in charge, they are getting saved by bunkers. You know what I'm saying? 
but the people that's actually fighting Sometimes I believe don't believe in what we fighting for, but they just trying to go in there and do what they need to do. Okay? Because they were forced to do it. Okay. They were told from higher ups, you must do it or you will pay the cost. You must do it or you will no longer be on this earth. You would do it or we would you know make your family suffer. You know, it's always something. Something going on to twist you to do something evil. Okay. But anyway, going back to the article. It says, I want the cave lead authorities and their real masters in the West to hear me. For everyone to remember, people living in Luhansky and Dowski, Kherson and Zaporizhia's, you know I'm tearing up these countries, are becoming our citizens forever, the Russian president said during the annexation ceremony. Putin has previously vowed to defend Russia's territory with all the means at our disposal, including nuclear weapons. U.S. officials have said that they don't believe Putin would resort to tacti tactical nuclear weapons, a type of bomb designed for use on the battlefield that is less powerful than a traditional strategic nuclear weapon, though they cannot discount the possibility. You can't tell what this man gonna do, sidebar. If he wants something and he says he's going to have it, he's going to put everybody he knows of out there to do what he asked them to do. He don't care how many casualties. And that's U.S. people to us. And that's U.S. Well, not U.S., but Russian people to them. And Ukrainian, that's their people. We didn't ask to go to war. Half, half the time, we don't understand what y'all fight for. We're like, go, go do get out in the ring. Tie each other out. And then whoever wins, that's what we're going to go with. Okay? But you're talking about destroying mass life on earth just to get what you want. Who going to populate the earth again? Especially if you got women up there that don't have hysterectomies, that are not, uh, they're too old to be uh, carrying children. What's going on? You going to kidnap all the children of the world that's less than 12 years old? Or that's 12 to 15 years old? Why are they going through? Well, yeah, you can't start your cycle at 12. Well, they going to uh, popul repopulate the, organ um, the world? I don't understand what's going on. It's some befoolery going on right here. Some foolishness, fake, fraudulent, fuckery activity is going on. Okay? And these are our leaders. These are our leaders that can't sit down at the drawing board and say, you know, okay, we're going to play cards until this stuff works out. You know what I'm saying? We're going to play knuckles. You know, or, or we're going to go in the boxing ring and, you know, let have on our physical uh, restraints or however our physical bodies can take us. And whatever happens, happens. You know what I'm saying? Play a game of Jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? Do something besides picking up a gun or a nuclear bomb or any others uh, we can use to destroy another uh, person's livelihood as well as life. We're supposed to sustain life, protect life, not take life. Oh, men and their weapons, I tell you. Men and their weapons. Okay. Um, okay, it says Putin has previously vowed to defend Russia territory with all the means at our disposal, including nuclear weapons. U.S. officials have said that they don't believe he will do it, but he may have that possibility to do it. So we can't speak on that. We are looking very carefully to see if Russia is actually doing anything that suggests that they are contemplating the use of nuclear weapons. To date, we've not seen them take the, these actions, U.S. Secretary of State Blink, Blinken said Friday. Well, maybe your intel are not giving you good intel, meaning people that are over there to spy for the U.S. And then we might got Russian people over here in the U.S. spying for Russia. You see, see what I'm saying? Double agents. I know y'all heard of them. Y'all seen them in plenty of these action-packed movies. Okay, how shit really get down. They ain't just showing you just for uh, kicks and hoo-hoos and entertainment. They doing that shit in real life if you don't really know about that. Okay? But, um, we're going back to the article. It says, um, annexation fails to hide gulf between uh, what Putin wants and, and what his forces can hold. Analysts believe that Putin hopes the annexations will help shift public opinion in Russia in favor of what the Kremlin calls it special military operations in uh, Ukraine. You, euphemistically. Uh, youth, wait a minute. We ain't gonna pronounce that word, okay? 
Uh, the Russian leader enjoyed approval ratings after Kremlin was women. That don't sound right. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, the Russian leader enjoyed stratophysic approval ratings after the Kremlin was annexed after a similar so-called referendum in 2014. But that was done in a largely bodiless manner using little green men. What the hell are they talking about little green men in here? Let me press on that see what see what come up. Little green men. Lord have mercy. I don't know. Maybe they just threw that shit in now just to uh, throw us off what we were reading. I don't know. Well, I'm talking some little green men. Got aliens running around him. Demonic beings running around him or something. But anyway, okay. But that's what they said. But that was but that was done in a largely bodiless manner using little green men. Okay, maybe it was a euphemism or something. I have no idea. Okay, it says Russian special operation troops who poured over the border into the Palencia ahead of the annexation. This invasion of Ukraine has proven to be a bloody, seemingly intractable conflict that has cost the Russian military countless, countless lives. Putin's announcement of a partial mobilization last week led many Russians who do not support the war to fear that they will be drawn into the conflict. I bet you they tried to hightail it out of there, but I'm sure they got caught when he got to the border. But, you know, it just is what it is. You had a good effort to try to leave, uh, flee the situation before you are, like, pulled in it without, your, you know, your, you giving your consent to be in any way a part of that situation. More than 200,000 people, many of them young men of fighting age, have fled Russia since the partial mobilization began. Several who spoke with CNN voiced fears that the government could impose a draft at a later date. Now, see, that's what I'm talking about. Get the hell out of there if you can. Okay. Um, inside Russia, the renewed war effort and its apparent blotch rollout has been met in some corners with anger. Reports emerged of men being improperly constricted, which Putin appeared to acknowledge on Thursday when he demanded that mistakes related to the order be re rectified. Activist groups have said ethnic minorities in Russia are being disproportionately mobilized. Heated protests broke out in several regions with significant ethnic my art minority populations, including the predominantly Muslim region of Dasestrand. Meanwhile, small demonstrations uh, were reported last week in 38 Russian cities, including Moscow and St. Petersburg, according to Independent Monitoring Group OBD slash info. A spokesperson for the organization told CNN other protesters arrested by riot police were being drafted <laughs> directly to the Russian military. Now, ain't got some bullshit. So, I don't think I say fight the power. Fight the power that be. And it seems like it's Putin over there. Cutting up. Okay. Cutting up. Let me see if I got some audio for you all to hear. Okay, that's a commercial. We don't want to hear the commercial. <sighs> what we got here? What we got here? Okay. The outcome, never in doubt, Putin's illegal and sham referenda in eastern and southern Ukraine, never more than a pretext to annex them to Russia. He's trying to create a, a situation in which he claims that now that they are an integral part of Russian territory, he's engaging in self-defense by defending these territories. Putin did it with Ukraine's Crimea, 2014. Illegal invasion, illegal sham referendum, illegal annexation to Russia. We were ready to do it. And then threats of nuclear attack, should his land grab be resisted. It's the same play this time. Last week, re-upping his nuclear threat over the referendum regions, Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, and Kherson. Not a bluff, he says. But Putin looks weak, his bluff already called. If Russia crosses this line, there will be catastrophic consequences for Russia. The United States will respond decisively. 
Putin is in a corner. Battlefield losses mounting in Ukraine. Defeat is not an option for the Russian leadership. There should be something that can be presented uh, to the public as a victory. He has staked his legacy as a great Russian leader on taking lands that he believes rightfully should belong to Russia. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, says Putin plans to conscript Ukrainians from their newly annexed territory to fight for Russia, just as he has done in Crimea. Ukraine demands punishment for trying to steal our territory. Zelensky vows to fight back for every inch of his country, specifically what Putin has annexed. In Moscow, Putin cannot or will not read the reality of what's happening with his disastrous war and is ready to sign into law his state Duma's rubber stamp of the fictitious vote. It will have little meaning outside Moscow. I can speak on behalf of the member states of the European Union that none of them will recognize this falsified outcome. But all this may be part of Putin's calculus. They didn't count uh, on any recognition of the referendum result. What he must be striving for is to brandish the nuclear weapons, make all kinds of threats to Europe, and then say, OK, so let's negotiate a settlement. It's just like the beginning of the war. In plain sight, Putin creates and uses sham laws to get what he wants. His miscalculation now, he's losing the war. He can't dictate terms. Nick Robertson, CNN, London. Okay, so I gave y'all that audio. I tell you, this word needs prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer. And they really just need to stop going to war because they be tearing up people's houses, their lives, their family. It just don't make sense. It just don't make sense. That's why, you know, the government be want uh, women up there. Now, of course, we ain't finna get to, we ain't finna try to go to war because we too pretty for that. Okay, we might be pouting and being petty and we probably won't talk to you all, like I said, for a couple of weeks or so. But then we'll come back to the drawing board and we'll do what we got to do. But uh, that's just my fantasy, my world, or where I live in. Because, you know, I'm pretty sure you got some strong head uh, alpha women out there that think that, yes, we got to go to war. We got to use all these different tactics. I'm like, put their asses in a ring, okay? If they get, you know, if they, they, they people can gear up, our people gear up, and we just fight in the ring to the, you know, not, not to the death, but till they can't take no more, then we put another one up there. And how many we have on each uh, side has, you know, prevailed, then that's what we're going to go with. That's what we're going to go with. We do not need nuclear war. Sometimes I hate when scientists just go a little bit too far and they just show what can be done as far as nuclear weapons or, or weapons, period, or different type of techniques to force people to do stuff, you know. That you can probably, you know, seen in these movies where they go and they try to get a person to talk to give up information. You know, the, uh, the techniques they use. Are uh, they either going to drown, try to drown your ass into scaring to tell them what they need you to do. They start uh, cutting out body parts. You know, just really hellacious, horrific type stuff. Okay. But uh, we'll keep a watch on this. We'll keep updating you to see where we are. Hopefully we will how cooler heads prevail and you know maybe we can punk the other person you know what i'm saying into mm -hmm. thinking that we were gonna really do something but we were just as scared as they was you know what i'm saying but men you know they get to the point where they feel threatened they're a uh, man who has been challenged so they feel inferior or made to feel inferior by somebody else uh then they got to pump up their chest and throw innocent people out there instead of they taking their ass up there you pick up a gun you pick up a, a, a weapon in the artillery and go to the wall that you're supposed to be uh having a blanket security for whoever country you protected you go out there putin you go out there biden you go out there charles king charles the third pick up a weapon and see what you would come up to doing what you feel like you needed to do if uh somebody was in your face with all the um uh, what you call it uh weapons they could use against you would you be able to pull the trigger would you able be able to pull 
the uh, punch the uh, code to send off a nuclear missile, let us know. Because it ain't you doing it. It's always somebody else. So that's all I got for this particular story. Y'all get down in those comments. Y'all let me know what y'all felt about this situation. About, you know, the U.S. trying to go to war uh, against Putin and stuff. Mm -mm. Too many lives have been lost in the past and the present. And we got to think about our future. If that is, if that is, if, uh, if that even is a thing today. Okay? So like I said, we got natural disasters going out there. Or you've got scientists that don't rig something up to make it look like a natural disaster but either or people are hurting out there and they're getting killed senseless that's all i got I ain't got no more and i'll see y'all on the next video but don't forget to subscribe like my videos and definitely share if you care but if not just just hit the button okay hit the button to like all right give yourself a break over here trying to break these news stories out and get y'all to you know have a conversation and stuff and subscribe to the channel. We need to grow. Yes, we do. And I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.